yeah so i think uh, we are aware like what to discuss right like uh, last time as per the discussion we'll start with our sql and pl sql okay so let me sure. let me give a total overview what are the technical things we'll be covering as part of our course okay so okay. first of all like one more thing is like whenever we learn anything it is always good to get most or get more knowledge on the basic the foundation one so the more yes. the more clarity you have on the foundation it becomes very easy for for you to explore many things okay so now yes we are working on we'll be working on oracle e business suite erp right okay yes. Yes. and so basic question for you is it a software or hardware it is a software why Oracle is a database, right? So Oracle, so whatever we, yeah, one more sorry. thing. Sorry, Oracle mm -hmm. eBusiness Suite is it a database? Mm -hmm. Is it mm -hmm. database? I'm asking you, is it a database? It is an ER. It is an ERP. So what is the difference between ERP and database? In ERP, you will be getting like different things will be there, and in ER. In ERP, we will be having uh, some sort of data. Like we will like some thing, uh, like we are, if we are storing anything like data, like we will be maintaining some database for that. Mm -hmm. And ERP is a like it works on always uh, server, either as a cloud or server. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So anyway, let me give you clarity. So as you said, Oracle eBusiness Suite is a software. Okay. Y yes. So. And what is the definition of ERP? Enterprise Resource Planning. Resource Planning. So, why does enterprises, any enterprise, chooses ERP? Why can't they develop their own application, right? So, the basic thing is for a bigger organization. See, whenever you, whenever any organization, specifically Oracle eBusiness Suite, if any, if any company is using Oracle eBusiness Suite, it means that it's a big company. Simple thing. Why? Because yes. this is required for only bigger, bigger organization, not just a small 50 employee company. It is generally used for a bigger company, a manufacturing company, or a chemical company, or a logistic company, which is which is which is having a turnover of minimum 1500, like uh, 10 crores, minimum 10 crores INR. Okay, any company whose turnover yes. is less than that, they cannot afford Oracle business suite software. Okay, but yes. Why does what is the need? First of all, we have to understand what is the functionality it will provide and why will the company use this ERP that we have to have a clarity. So the basic thing is ERP that as per the definition, it says that enterprise resource planning. So okay. I'm not clear on what exactly this means, but let me tell you what it is. So in any enterprise, effective usage of any of the resources will always help out in the business to increase the turnover. Right, nothing but and let us say you you got some items and you need to use in a productive manner. You should not have a wastage, right? More wastage, nobody prefers to have it. And you need to use yes. them appropriately. Let us say during a particular season or during Ramzan or Christmas or Dasra, you will have a more set of items to be produced. In other season, in dead season, you have to you have to produce less items. So it all depends yes. upon your demand, right? Demand supply chain, everything should should be in a appropriate appropriate manner. Let us say during a festival season, you need to tie up with larger number of vendors. During a normal season, it doesn't need any vendors, right? Yes. So nothing but using the resource in an effective manner. That is first thing. Another thing is maintaining all the all the transaction, whatever the transaction which happens in a digitized manner, right? Nothing but the computerized manner, computerized manner. Yes. Now, in a bigger organization, when you say a 15 crore turnover company, for each minute you will have at least five purchase order or 10 sales, sale, 10 sales order, which will be happening. But as a CEO yes. of the company, how can you manage? Or maybe let us say head of the financial department, you you can't go to and you can't go to a particular shop workshop and find out what is happening, right? You just need a report yes. to find out that. So yes. enterprise resource planning, the specifically the software, it just a software application. Is a software application to manage business transactions. That's the purpose of a soft ERP. It's just a simple yeah. software application, right? What yes. is MS Word? MS Word is a software package, right? Yes. MS Word or maybe Skype or a Notepad. These are all software applications, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So e-business suit and one more important thing is in the e-business suit, 
specifically in any software generally you'll have a different set of versions right yes like maybe if we consider android you'll have a version 7 6 1 2 3 whatever it is isn't it you'll have different versions which are goes on because every time a particular company who which develops a particular software they always tries to enhance the particular content in that nothing but the functionality because day day by day the what is the complexities will increase the functionalities the functionalities which are required by customer also will be in much need new yes. technology comes into picture that should be adapted into your erp right so that is what you'll have yeah. different versions so right now what i am aware is the version of e business suit is 12.2.6 maybe which was released 2 months back i think september 2017 yeah or 12.2.6 okay and the present yes. version as per our training what we use is 12.1.3 which got released maybe a 7 years back i guess 2010 yes. okay but uh, i can surely say that 50% of the customers still on the 12.1.3 okay so and technically like as a developer it won't affect much of course in architecture wise there are little bit changes functionality wise there are changes but technically it won't be that much change for us okay yes and we have to understand the technical stack of e-business suit what is the technical stack of any software application or right? specifically erp so technical stack is nothing but technically what are the components components involved in this particular one okay <coughs> Software, sorry. Front end, middle tire, and back end. Back end. Okay. So before uh, giving you the details on technical stack, let me show you the live thing. Okay, and then we can discuss again on this. Any questions so far? Continue asking that. Yeah, sure. Like this video is also will be shared, right? Sita? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. And now, okay. Mm. So, can you see a particular application which I opened? This is your e-business suit. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And this particular software runs in a particular software port. Okay. And as it, as this is an enterprise application, it always requires a particular user credentials to be provided. Then only it will work. So let us log into yes. the system now. So whatever you are doing now, nothing but like I opened a particular application in a browser. This is the address of my server, and I'm just clicking on login, yes. right? So whatever you are seeing, yes. this one, this is called user interface, right? As an end user yes. or enterprise user, you are using the application through this particular interface. So browser is our interface, and whatever you are you you seeing this particular in the browser, this is called user interface. Okay. Now, yes. so Whenever I perform nothing but let us say whenever I create any transaction, maybe creating a purchase order or a sales order or a service contract, right? Or maybe creating an employee or generating a base slip, everything is a transaction, right? So what I yeah. like where it will get stored, as you know that we use a software called database, right? So database is a software to store data. Yes. And front end is nothing but a user interface for the user to either perform all CRUD operations, create, read update and delete Indeed. okay yes and now let us say if you want to i'll just perform one simple easy transaction then we can discuss again so i'll just okay so let me open the database also So what are we discussing today? It's more, it's uh, it's mostly about an overview kind of thing. Okay. So yeah. again, these things will get repeated. But initial session is just most of, uh, of the basic things to get a clarity. What we are learning, what we are going to discuss, kind of thing. I am just yeah. connecting to my database, which is relevant for my e-business suit. So the thing is, your database can also run independently, right? But here in our case, yeah. the database which I am using is Link to the Oracle ERP. Oracle ERP cannot run without database, but database can run independently also, right? So those flavors are totally yes. different. Okay. Yes. So what I will do is I'll just create a particular user. Okay. 
where user underscore name i'll just create sorry irfan right yes okay so <laughs> now as of now there are no records with your name now what i will do is yes. i'll just create a user irfan welcome one two three welcome one two three okay so now i just created a user with your name now the expectation is that when i reopen my system again it has to show this particular record uh, what i will do is now let yeah. us say i'll assign a responsibility to this one yes system administrator okay so i'll just log out yeah. now In the beginning, it will ask the password. Yeah. Yes. So now the basic thing we have to understand is, we created some data yeah. and that got stored. That got stored. It's a yes. persistent. So nothing but whatever the information which we entered in the system, it is getting stored in the database, right? So now if I just execute this particular query, it has to show a record, right? Yeah. It will so be the showing. basic purpose of the database is to yes, store yes. the transactional stuff. Okay, yes. so do you know what do you mean by transaction? I've been telling data and transaction kind of thing, right? What is the thing? What do you mean by transaction? What do you mean by data? Transaction, you're asking. Yes. Transaction, data. See, whatever the we whatever. Hmm. Hmm. Whatever the operation we performed through the application. Hmm. Yeah. So the operation, whatever we we performed. Through the software, like we are creating supplies, orders, whatever we create, that will develop. And the fact, yes, hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. That will be, yeah, that is a transaction comes under transaction. And whatever the purchase order we are creating, hmm. that that will that the data that considered can that can be considered as a data. Do you think? And the, uh, suppose yeah. if sorry. we have been purchased, mm -hmm. sorry. Continue, continue. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and whatever the data, like if we have been uh, when we we have created one purchase order, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever the information which we are giving in the purchase order, like um, toward like from which supplier we are buying, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. from which supplier we are uh, delivering the goods using mm -hmm. the like O2C cycle, like some that that can be set to as an information. No, that's wrong. I'll tell you. Okay. Yeah, no, I'll just want to give a clarity. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah, because this is see literally actually this is I mean in real world this is used interchangeably. Okay, in real world it is just simply used interchangeably. Okay. But I just want to give a clarity. So we know. So what is a database? One more important thing. Database is just a software or hardware. Database is a software or hardware. It's a software. Sure. Yes. Okay, so database is just a simple software to store data yes. in a appropriate manner so that the CRUD operations will be in a. I mean, whatever you store, it can be retrieved in an appropriate manner, right? It's a base for data. Operation can be data. Yes. Base. It just stores the data, right? It's a base yes. for the data. Hmm. Now, what do you mean by transactional data? So, transactional data is nothing but we are using an Oracle ERP. What is the purpose of our ERP? To maintain our day-to-day -day operations in a digitized manner. What are the digitized man? What yes. are the day-to-day -day operation? Nothing but let us say if we consider airfare, uh, what you say, airplane or railway stuff or a bus station. What do they do? Ticketing, right? They need to maintain all the transactional data. So, yes. the like the purpose yes. of your day-to-day -day operation, nothing but transactional. So that is why it is called transactional data because. It is just one of the purpose. The transaction means nothing but let us say you purchased a ticket. It's a transaction. You purchased a particular good. It's a transaction. Yes. That's what the transactional data means. Mm -hmm. But coming to information, a little bit different. So in the data, it generally in like uh, as per the definition which I studied long back, maybe 10 or 20 years back, it's called raw, raw facts. We call it as a data is nothing but raw fact. So from a transactional data, you cannot find out the relevancy of your business. Nothing but let us say I'm a managing director of a company and you say that like these are the day-to-day -day operation. Let us assume that you have performed one lakh operations on a particular day and you, and you just provide that particular 
total transactional data to me i cannot understand anything from that but yes. what i understand is if you provide me the data in appropriate manner nothing but let us say on monday the trans on monday the sales were 1 lakh on tuesday the sales were 2 lakhs on tuesday on thursday the sales were 5 lakhs if you provide me appropriate data in a proper manner then i can easily understand that is why information is nothing but processed data information is nothing but processed data it's like you know you have a fruit and juice juice is nothing but your information that's how it is i can say it's just a raw fruit and it's a processed fruit the raw fruit and the as a technical developer may like uh, set the data in a proper manner that is called information right yeah providing a data data yeah providing data, nothing but representational purpose generally like what do you mean by yes. report what do you mean by report we generally call like a simple thing progress report what is the difference between a progress report and your answer sheet progress will be in a well it, it will be a well mannered yeah so our parents require progress sheet that doesn't matter about answer yes. sheets right they just answer want sheet. the information in appropriate manner so that simply they can put a signature yes okay clear that is the data difference between yes. data and uh, information now information. so yeah now one more important clarity we require is user interface we just saw the user interface where we enter our data and back end we just observe that where it is getting stored but what is a middle tier what is a middle tier yes this is very much important and this is where most of the developer doesn't understand so before understanding about middle tier i need want you i want to ask few questions which programming language you are aware java okay java so what is java java is a platform independent language I'll leave about that and it, it is a software a... programming language <laughs> yeah it's a software program language okay now yes as a developer this file extension the source code will be in dot java right source yes. code yeah and dot class is your compiled code right compiled code yes okay. yeah now what is the difference between dot java and dot class dot java and dot class yeah whatever this uh, code which we develop which we will be save uh, uh, whatever the, the code we will develop that we will be seen dot java and that can be readable in after compiling that that source code will be uh, converted to dot class okay so why can't the machine run dot java directly what is the need of conversion ja in java you are asking means we use jvm java virtual machine mm -hmm. okay so anyways like uh, not to get more on this so the basic thing is like yes. uh, java dot java is a developer readable format and dot class is a yeah. machine readable format right it's just a machine yes. readable format yeah and this is a developer readable format so the basic yes. thing is why do you like uh, now you have a particular java why can't direct jvm can run java program it will not run the reason is it has to parse nothing but let us say i'm talking to you so how can you understand until unless you parse my instructions isn't it your brain has to parse the parse whatever i'm talking then only you can understand right yes a simple thing is you have a food in front of you and you have just taken into your mouth until unless your digestive system digests it it will not get into enter into your body right or simple yes. your mouth until your mouth chews the food it will not enter into your stomach so the basic yes. thing is so there will be a parsing engine in any programming language not only in java any any language you take you'll have a parsing engine which will convert developer code into machine code and in some of the system it will be automatic in some in some set of programming language it, you may not observe that difference but generally this is what happens and now you have something a machine readable code now directly jvm will run the machine code rather than again reading your source code yes Isn't it? that is the purpose yeah now what is a jvm jvm is a again a software or maybe a virtual machine you call, call it as nothing but a runnable runtime engine i will call it as a runtime engine yeah. to execute your machine code machine code yes okay so yes. can i call jvm as my application server yes you can that is a middle tier then this is your middle tier yeah 
okay <laughs> it like interface right between yeah so don't use the term interface actually it is a logical okay, okay. logically it is a, it is a interface but in erp if you say interface it will lead to other con- yeah. other kind of things so better don't yes, call yes, interface yes. just say middle tier okay, yeah. application middle server tire, yeah. okay okay so in easy terms an application server is nothing but a runtime engine for your programming so we just now we got a clarity that why do you require a, why do you why does a particular uh, application server require a machine code because it doesn't need to parse again right you have a ready made code nothing but let us say you are preparing a food i am taking most of the exams on food because i think it is easy to understand let us say you are preparing yeah. a food and what do you require you always first of all cut the vegetables and cook the food assume that yes. if you have the ready made things which are available the the initial portion of cutting it unpacking it is not required for you right yes directly you yeah. can cook it it's a ready made ready made food kind of thing so the same way the basic thing is your developer code will get converted to machine code and your runtime engine will just directly read the machine code because the machine code cannot be generated by the developer i mean to say the software converts right no as a developer can you write a machine code you cannot run it you cannot write it simple no. right so the yes. machine code which is an automated generated code through some other compilers and once it is generated as a developer we cannot modify it if you develop, if you modify it it will get corrupted simple you can modify it but it will you'll nothing but you're corrupting it it will not work okay yes. so that is why runtime engine requires a readable machine readable code that so that it doesn't need to recompile again it doesn't need to reparse it again okay clear yes yes so that is nothing but yeah. a middle middle tier so middle tier is an application server mm-hmm. to run the machine code in our case in our oracle erp specifically so we have n number of not n number but as uh, like uh, multiple application servers are there why do we require multiple application server because in oracle erp we have multiple tools which are available nothing but i can say in easier terms nothing but you have multiple programming language which are available so that you require multiple application servers nothing but i know three languages i need three yes. parsers right now i know telugu hindi english so i required three parsers to run those particular interfaces to to you know like to understand those languages i mean the same way yes. now within the oracle erp we have some set of different tools so what are those tools like uh, we have uh, the front end user interface like let me write here we generally call it as rice or maybe let us say yeah either way rice w f and o f these are the yeah. different tools which are available in the oracle erp so in the reports again there are two ways two things rdf and xml for xml yes so interface conversion leave it as of no extension so leave it and this is a workflow forms forms and oracle application framework okay now this is a yeah. java programming language this is a yes. fmp nothing but oracle proprietary code right maybe what i remember is this is developed using c++ c++ and workflow okay. this again a proprietary tool no programming language we are not sure what oracle has used internally right so this requires its own engine workflow requires its own engine forms require its own engine of requires its own engine and rdf reports it requires its own engine and xml publisher also requires its own engine that's why there are as of now there are five different engines we require because each is a different right the java of of is not relevant for rdf report i mean to say the library which is required right the application server which which need to execute because fmb works on a c++ environment oa works on a java environment workflow it specifically runs on your database kind of environment database has its own set of application server internally it will have workflow engine something like that okay so there are multiple application servers involved clear yes okay simple thing is when your programming language is different you require different runtime engine that's it yes now so come mm-hmm. into the basic thing where do you require sql and pl sql so interface mm-hmm. or conversion so interface is nothing but when you are using a particular software application specifically in our oracle erp so you require integration with the different erps also so why do we require yes. what is the need of that will understand that okay yeah okay so simple thing is like uh, let us say when you go to any of the supermarket let us say big bazaar when you go to a big bazaar right so let us say i am the 
what you say the salesperson right and you are a customer okay okay now assume that i'll just write irfan irfan is a customer irfan came to big bazaar right bb right sales mm -hmm. so let us assume that you purchased goods of worth 1000 rupees okay you have done a purchase yeah. of goods of 1000 rupees now for you for you like what do you do you will pay an amount of 1000 rupees 1000 rupees to big bazaar right and yes. in return what do you get yes in return you will get goods goods from the big bazaar okay and there are two scenarios we have to think let us say from irfan point of view and from the big bazaar point of view two ways we can think now for you you have done some purchase right it will become purchase order for you right pivo yes purchase order okay yeah now for me from a big bazaar yes. salesman yeah. points of view it is my sales order agree yes sales order okay the difference between a sales order and purchase yes. order assume that yes assume that you are a enterprise uh, you are part of an enterprise nothing but like irfan belongs to a company nothing but maybe tata motors so you, are, you belong to Tata Motors where you are buying a particular set of material from a particular company. Then what you have to do, whatever you buy, you have to create in your Tata Motors company as a purchase order. Or maybe leave it this one. I'll yes. give a clarity on this. Let us say, uh, assume that we have two companies, Tata Motors and uh, what do you call? Sony Enterprises. Okay. Assume that. Tata Enterprise and Sony Electronics. Okay. Now, so assume that Tata Motors need to buy a sound system from Sony Enterprise. Okay. They want to buy sound systems from Sony Electronics. Now, Tata Motors is an enterprise, right? So who will represent Tata Motors yes. to buy a product from Sony Electronics? Sony Electronics is also another enterprise. So what do we do yes. is like from a Tata Motors perspective, there will be some set of employees who will have a role called purchase order supervisor role yes not they all purchase the goods yeah, right. like them. yes they'll purchase you can say raw material or maybe a, whatever it could call the audio system whatever you call they'll buy from yeah. sony electronics for every, yes okay and for, and for every employee there will be no access for them. yes it depends upon the designation right it, it's an enterprise application yes that's all mm -hmm. yeah i was saying that yeah yeah so it will be a purchase order for you and from sony it is a sales order okay yes okay hmm. and now coming to the interfaces and conversion so interfaces and conversion is nothing but let us say so interfaces comes into picture let us talk about interfaces first okay interfaces there are two types inbound and outbound okay so yes. before understanding this one let us say assume that like uh, you have your own erp application so you are a manufacturing company okay if on goods and services okay now what you want to do is like uh, you want to implement another software application which will integrate with your erp assume that you are an oracle erp already okay but due to some particular functionalities which are not available in oracle erp you want to you want to design you want to get some other software to be designed that will integrate with your system okay yes then what do you do whatever data which you have in oracle erp should be should be readable to some other software isn't it yes okay yeah so or maybe other easier thing is let us say simple thing is like a leave management app so as per your company you want to design a you want to design a mobile app called leave management app so as an employee of your organization so what i prefer to is i need, i just want an app so where i can apply leave and you can apply my supervisor can approve okay now the data has to flow from your oracle erp to this particular yes. application right so now 
from Oracle ERP, the data has to flow to you to your mobile app, right? Vice versa also. I have to read my data. I have to read the data in my mobile app, and I also should be capable capable enough to update the data in the Oracle ERP also. Isn't it? It's a two and fro. Yes. It should be two and fro. Yes. So the simple thing is, whenever data is entering into Oracle, we call it as inbound. Whenever you're sending the data outside, it's called outbound. That's the only difference. If you are sending some yes. data to inside into Oracle, it is called inbound. And if you are retrieving some data, it's called outbound. Okay. So the extraction manner yes. depends upon in number of ways. When you say outbound, let us say whatever data which I have in my Oracle ERP, can you extract in a particular file, like maybe a CSV or maybe a PDF? Or a text format, XML format. This is called outbound. You are extracting some data from your ERP in an appropriate manner. We call this outbound. And if you are pumping some data into Oracle ERP, but how do you pump the data? Nothing but Oracle ERP understands whatever it is available in database. Until it is something is available in database, it cannot understand. Because as a business user, I don't know what is available in database. I can just validate what is available in the forms in the user interface. Business user can understand what is available through the user forms, right? Through the, through the user interface, he cannot understand what yeah. is available in the database. He doesn't know what is available in the backend. Is not. He doesn't care about that. Yes. Okay. Yes. We'll not get much deeper into interface as of now, but so when you say interface, interface nothing but you have you you have a particular mm -hmm. software, and there is a need for your organization to map to use the data which is available in ERP through the other system, then you'll you'll get through the interfaces. Yes. Okay, got clarity? Yes, yes. Yeah, any other question now? Mm. You only ask, I'll, I'll give if possible. I'll try for that. Okay. You may ask the questions. Fine. So, are you from electronics background or software background? IT background? Which branch? Computer science. Computer okay. science. Okay. Then you should be aware of a, pro a particular course called software engineering, right? And software life yes. cycle. Software life cycle. Yes. So it's what? DLC. Yeah, software SDLC. development license. Yeah, SDLC. So now, so like a, one basic thing is now you already have an Oracle ERP software which is available. And as a developer, what mm -hmm. we do, because when something is already available, we are not we are not implementing anything, right? Nothing but we will not be designing any new component at all. Okay, we'll design, but one basic thing is yeah. you have a ready-made product. Why does it require developer for a customer? Nothing but let me tell you again clearly here. Uh, I'll take again the uh, maybe let us say Airtel. So Airtel telephone services. Okay, Airtel is a telephone service company, and which they they want to use Oracle ERP for their internal operation purpose. Now, so Oracle ERP is provided by who? Oracle, right? Oracle company. He's a vendor for the Oracle ERP software. Yes, right. Now Oracle is already Oracle has already designed a software and Atel is purchasing it. So why does it require developers? What what do we do first of all? If something is already available, Atel Atel can simply get it, install it. Then why does it require developers? It just requires a sub uh, uh, normal you know Oracle will install the software. That's it, right? Why do you require developers or consultants? Yes. Okay. So before getting into this one, I'll tell yeah, you. In... Yeah, tell me. Yeah, continue with that. So generally, like now, let us say, assume that uh, you just got an AC, okay? And mm. if you buy a product of product AC which costs around twenty-five to fifty thousand, you have a warranty, mm. right? Whenever you get any issue, you'll just call the vendor to provide a service, okay? Yes. That is one story. Assume that you just bought a particular uh, device or maybe a tube light, which is just a 50 rupees, right? It is use and throw. If it doesn't work, you just simply throw, you'll get a new one. Isn't it? Yes. So some particular applications or nothing but appliances, I mean to say, some particular appliances which require a service, 
without that it will not work nothing but let us i have a purifier which require service for every one year i need to change the candles i need to buy new candles and i need a dedicated service for every one year because as a home user i doesn't know how to fit how to fit that particular pipeline or candle isn't it yes. now in this oracle erp also so you have a oracle has designed a particular software okay and one more important thing is the way airtel runs doesn't mean that vodafone also will run in the same way isn't it vodafone also likes yes. red airtel also likes red doesn't mean both are same right yes. so the basic thing is the yep. way their business operates or the way they have their margins the way they perform the transactions everything will be different but as a oracle assume that both vodafone and oracle both are using oracle erp so now Oracle uh, Airtel business model is a little bit different. Vodafone business model is a little bit different. So who will configure that? A Oracle will not configure it, right? Let us say you are buying a you are buying a jeans pant from your Big Bazaar. Will Big Bazaar will design the goods according to you until unless you are a celebrity, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes. Big Bazaar just designs the product considering a generic people, 34, 32, 36, whatever it is, right? It doesn't yes. design 34.5, 34.9 because your fund size is 34.9, isn't it? Hmm. So yeah. what I'm trying to tell you is, Oracle designs a software in a generic manner. Now, the the when yeah. the, the business enterprises which are buying it, they have to configure according to their business requirements. So that is where the developers will come yes. into picture configuration. Come. Yeah. So in this again, there are multiple people. One is technical consultants yes functional consultants functional and yes the erp dba okay because yes. everyone will have their own skill okay yes so the basic thing is erp dba is responsible for applying patches applying patches installing this particular software con little these all things will be done by the dba coming mm -hmm. to functional consultant they will be just mapping their business requirements to the oracle erp now let us say you have some requirement so these functional consultants has to tell that okay if you have if you want to perform purchase order you have to go to purchasing order super responsibility open the purchase order they have to tell that these particular people will configure yes. that because yes. nothing but let us say atel is yes. having operations across let us consider simple our state telangana in telangana there are 10 places mm -hmm. atel has to operate but as a ceo of this yes. atel how do i know that from which place i'm getting a particular transaction nothing but from which particular place how much profit or how many transactions are happening nothing but for each place yes. i have to create a particular function uh, career, what you say mapping right yes right nothing but simple let us say you have a franchise business and if you want to know from which particular franchise how much profit you are getting you need to identify from franchise number right yes okay the same way this functional consultant will create or configure the erp according to the business of the enterprise okay yeah. that is the responsibility of functional consultant and what is the responsibility of technical consultant consultant is as we just now discussed that erp is a generic software it may not suit every requirement right there are some particular configurations which we these particular people will do and we also need to design some new components nothing but we can be designing a new pages we can be designing a new reports let us say oracle by default will provide some set of reports but they may not satisfy every yeah. every client they may need yes. to they may need to design some extra components that will be provided by functional people as well as the business people both yes okay that is where the technical people will come into picture yeah okay yes yeah so where are we actually we are yeah we are working on software life cycle right so why i'm telling all this thing is because when you buy a software it it's not just a one time use right now let us say i just install oracle erp yeah. that's it there is no need of any developer you cannot say that because it is enterprise application which require constant management right so maybe if you are if you yeah. remember it, it depends will, on daily transaction yep of course so you have something called implementation right and support yes so absolutely right so when you are implementing yes. your product for the first time it is called implementation and then you require a constant support nothing but let us say i bought a water filter but i require a support every year 
isn't it? It's just a simple product. But yeah. when I buy a one crore product, I require a service every day. Nothing but you have an apartment yes. of 100 story building. Do you require support every day, 24 mm -hmm. by 7 or not? Yes, absolutely. Simple. Let us say I have a single house. I doesn't require support. I just call on support whenever I require. So it all depends upon the criticality of a business. Yes. Right? So in this particular case, ERP, yes, ERP, I just now we discussed, it's a very critical application for the business. The bigger enterprise only will afford it. So as per the bigger enterprises, they have transaction every day. They have to run 24 by 7. They require support also 24 by 7. Simple. Yes. Okay. The software life cycle here is like, uh, again, it goes to many things, right? Like, uh, uh, testing, maintaining. Yeah. Requirement, requirement gathering, right? And then yes. build, testing, right? And your support, sub, yeah, test, maintenance, user approval, maintenance, and the support is all things. It goes on. It goes on. The life cycle goes on. I may be, I would yeah. have missed something, but this is a general thing. Requirement yeah. to testing kind of thing. Okay. Yes, yes. So this is the overall overview of Oracle ERP. And yeah. one more important thing is what are the type of Oracle ERP projects? In real time, let us say you get some requirement from Naukri or some websites, right? Like we have a Oracle ERP opening for this particular thing. So generally, hmm. the type of projects which you may get called support projects or implementation project or it can be an upgrade project also. So support project means nothing but simple example, I'll try to tell you in a normal real time kind of thing rather than from a software specific. Let us say I have a 12 story apartment. It is already ready and everything is working, mm -hmm. but I just need some extra mm -hmm. support for my electricity maintenance. That is a support project. That's nothing but Oracle ERB mm -hmm. is totally implemented. Some other client has already, somebody, some other software vendor has already implemented. I just need some support to enhance my functionality or to design a new requirement something like that that is a support project yes implementation is nothing but from the scratch building from scratch nothing is available as of now we just need to implement the total configuration from scratch so generally yes. implementation projects will be from it varies from three months to two years also it varies from three months yes. to two years and of course this implement after implementation everyone has to go to support it's not that they after implementation there is nothing it's not like that they have to go to support there is no chance they can escape impossible yes okay or they may have in house support okay yes now, yes and coming to upgrade nothing but let us say it's like you know generally you upgrade your software right you upgrade your software uh, nothing but let us say 10 years back you just built only one for one floor building and today you want to have one more floor on the existing floor that is an upgrade they're just upgrading based on like your we can, business yeah. yeah we can take an example like right now we are using r12 1.3 right yes now it's came to 26 that is an upgrade comes in now yes that's what yeah this is software upgrade of course like uh, there are maybe if you are not aware there is a version mm -hmm. called 11 fight in. This is one of the famous version of Oracle ERP in R11 actually. So there are at least 15% okay. customers still on R11 also. So these upgrade Same. projects will also come into picture now. Okay. So do you know EMRI? Government? No. Government project? No, I don't know. Are you from Hyderabad? What is EMRI stands? Are you from Hyderabad? Yeah, I'm from Hyderabad. You never saw 104? 108? Sorry? Yeah, yeah so I have seen. So this particular ambulance, they use in the background, they use, they use Oracle ERP. 11 for 10. Okay. Oh, really? EMRI, emergency response, something is there. Okay. okay. Mm. Hmm. And even uh, the land, uh, the land registration, they use Oracle ERP. And even ATL uses Oracle ERP. Vodafone uses Oracle ERP, Tata Motors uses Oracle ERP. The lot number of vendors are there. Hmm. What is the difference between ERP and cloud? Okay. So coming to cloud, see, there is no difference. First of all, there is no link at all. But yeah. link is there. No, but no. okay, I'll tell you. So now, uh, I'll... Mm -hmm. so there is something called on-premise as well as on cloud. So mm -hmm. what do you mean? What do you mean by on-premise is nothing but. So let us say as a client, you want to configure your Oracle ERP on your system. What do you do? You will buy your hardware. And mm -hmm. on this hardware, you will be installing the software. This is called on-premise. Mm -hmm. 
Now on cloud is nothing but let us say as a client, I want the software, but I don't want to install in my hardware. I want you to take care of that. That is on. As on a rent VM. That's it. In easy terms, cloud is nothing but an hardware, hardware on rent. This is not on true rent, always. Yes. This is not true always, but generally, logically, you can call it's it. A, yeah. Yeah. So in one like more product, it is yes to buy an ERP it is very expensive and we are taking a cloud as an application from the Oracle right come again suppose um, my company is there and my turnover is a, a yearly 15 like 10 crores 8 crores only mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. I'm where I am thinking I don't want to buy an a separate application for my mm -hmm. company so okay. I will be uh, applying for the cloud from the Oracle okay so i'll clarify that see cloud mm -hmm. cloud is don't consider cloud is cheap cloud is costly okay. cloud is not Very, cheap yeah, yeah. cloud is not cheap at all why does cloud okay. preferred by many of the vendors because you have let us say we were just now initially we discussed about festival season right so in a given year, yes. generally the sales will be booming. Sales will be very much high in a particular four months period, maybe during Christmas, Ramzan, or Dasar, or Diwali, right? Generally three months. Yes. So out of 12 months, three months will be very peak. So do you think that during that period, should I buy some separate hardware? Nobody prefers to buy separate hardware only for three months in a given year, right? Yes. So what do they prefer is the cloud provides they elasticity right nothing but it's a pay on usage nothing but buy today i want extra hardware tomorrow it doesn't require that's how it okay. is right that is why it's like hardware on rent so yes it is, yes it is so don't say cost is the only factor for cloud even i used to say that but after the clarity i'm just saying this uh, okay so i change my mind. yeah cloud is not yeah. just only for the purpose of cost cost generally should not be compared cost may not be equal or same or more it depends. Yeah. It is yes. more about the expanding your business on a particular requirement, or it can be updating in a very faster manner, or integration also very much becomes easy on a cloud applications, right? That is the reason. Yes. In the cloud also, now as a customer, when you say Oracle eBusiness suit, as of now Oracle is Oracle is providing eBusiness suit on the on premise model. But on cloud model is also there for e-business suit. Okay. And now mm. one more thing you have to understand is when a particular now, maybe if you're aware of something called Salesforce. Yeah, Salesforce. Workday. AWS Workday. Okay. And AWS is just a it's a day-to-day -day user term is you day-to-day use term by many of the people, but now there's a difference between Salesforce and AWS. Okay. Don't say they're both are same. I'll tell you Salesforce, Salesforce is an ERP and we generally call it as SaaS. This SaaS is not okay. equal to the other SaaS which is there, there in the market. That is a different. What I'm saying is SaaS model, I mean to say. Software okay. as a service. It's a software as a service. Okay. Okay. So most of the ERPs now they're providing their software in the SaaS model. I mean to say now from Oracle, we have something called Oracle Fusion Cloud, or you can also call it as Oracle ERP Cloud. So yes. Oracle is having their own new ERP called Oracle Fusion Cloud, and that is a SaaS model. E-business suit is not SaaS model, SaaS model as of now. Workday is a SaaS model. Human Factors is a SaaS model. Ariba is a SaaS model, and even Microsoft Dynamics, I'm not sure, but uh, ne what do you call Net NetBeans? No, not NetBeans. Oracle NetSuit. NetSuit. NetSuit okay. is a uh, SME like a medium scale enterprise ERP application, which is a SaaS model. So when you say SaaS yes. model, hardware and software, everything will be taken care of by them. You just need to subscribe. That's it. Let us say you will say that no, my my company is a manufacturing company. I require your software as a service for 15 users for 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Simple subscription. That's it. Subscription based model. Okay. And how much usage of we are using? That much we have to pay. It depends, it like depends it, on usage. There are many factors. They will ask you like how much RAM you want to get provided, how much database you want to provide. The lot number of things will come into picture. In the cloud, again, you have yes. something called public, private, and hybrid. Yes. Now, let us say you want to take a particular room in a particular big hotel, and depends upon whether you want to have a private or a sharing mode or a public mode. Depends, right? That's how it is. Yes. So on a cloud also, yes. if you are a private, it's nothing but 
on a particular hardware only you will be your data will be there no other person data will be there and if it is a public it's a public everyone yes and if it is a hybrid it's a mix of both public and private nothing but you have a sing, you have a two floor building in one floor you will be using and in the second floor some other people will be using it's a mix of public yes. public and private okay so it is not easy to understand in just in one hour in a one hour session it will take much time to understand on cloud kind of thing okay so yes. and yeah coming to aws so in aws it is just mostly hardware and rent kind of thing of course there are many other things which are coming from amazon also just read on it if you are interested generally as of now i know is hardware and rent okay and but, but there are some particular things they are providing now like a database on database as a cloud service or a uh, what do you say what do you call application comes under networking AWS is a, like I'm not uh, uh, I don't have any clarity about AWS can be considered as a networking. See, networking is different, boss. Networking is about you know like uh, providing a network to your computers. AWS is a mm -hmm. cloud platform providing hardware on wow. rent. Google Cloud. Rent. Okay. Google Cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AWS. Yeah, yeah, got it. And Microsoft Azure. These are all cloud providers. They provide yes, software yes. as well as hardware, both on rent. Even Amazon also is having some set of applications on rent. Nothing but simple example I'll tell you. You are a you are a small company and you don't want to buy hardware, but you require a particular dot database. You require a proprietary database or enterprise database yeah. to be available. Okay, what do you do? Yes. Simply, simply you'll go to Google Cloud. You'll buy some hardware from them and you'll install the you'll install the database on that. That's it. You'll use for some time and based on your business, you, whether you ramp up or ramp down. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right. Fine. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. So go through some yeah. set of terminologies, keywords. Okay, it will take some time to understand. Fine. Yeah. Well, I like uh, tomorrow. Yeah. We'll try to meet tomorrow. Tomorrow, same time again. Nine thirty. Yeah. Sure. Yeah.